Hey everyone, I'm Casey with Series Makes, and today I'm going to upgrade the base of my drum sander. I was chatting with Rigid Power Tools recently about the fact that I had never used a job site table saw before, and we thought it would be cool for me to try one out on a project. So they sent over their new R4514 job site saw, along with their R4222 12 inch sliding miter saw, for me to test out. I wanted a ton of storage for sanding accessories and paper, so I came up with a simple base cabinet with four drawers and casters. I knew that I shouldn't cut a full sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood on the table saw, so I got to work breaking everything down with a straight edge and a circular saw. That made the panels much more manageable at the small job site saw. The job site saw was surprisingly sturdy and even had a nice dust collection shroud on it. One of the cooler features was an adjustable rip fence that could accommodate a 30 inch rip capacity. I continued to cut all of the panels to size and then it was time to remove the old base from the drum sander. I had made a simple rolling platform for the old base and planned to use it for the new cabinet. I pre-drilled the side panels so that I could screw them into the existing base platform. I also added a quarter inch roundover on all of the bottom edges so that boots or brooms couldn't get caught or rip the veneer of the plywood. Once all of the panels were cut, it was time to assemble everything. I started by adding glue to the side panels and using some clamps to hold everything in place while I ran in the screws. I then removed the clamps and ran in the rest of the screws. For the top panel, I used pocket holes for the joinery. I then clamped that in place and added the screws to secure it. I then cut the center panel and back panel to size and added pocket holes to them as well. I used my brad nailer to secure all of the panels and keep them in place while the glue dried. I could then run in the screws later. I removed the drum sander and flipped the old base over and used it to mark the hole locations in the top of the new cabinet. Then I could drill them through for installing the drum sander later. After getting the holes drilled, I added the casters back to the base. This made the cabinet much more manageable to move around the shop while I finished it. I wanted this to be a nicer cabinet, so I used some scrap maple to act as a small scale face frame. I made a zero clearance fence for my miter saw by using a scrap piece of plywood and clamping it in place. I then got to work cutting all of the miters for the face frame. I was really impressed with the results of this miter saw on this maple.
Being that the bottom of the cabinet had a double layer of plywood, I simply added in a second section of maple there. To hold everything in place, I used wood glue with a little bit of super glue in the ends and blue tape to hold everything down. After the face frame had dried, I used a flush trim bit in the router to clean up the edges. Next up was the drawer slides. I chose to use bloom slides for this project as they have quickly become my favorite slides to use. Each of the upper and lower openings is the exact same size, so I made spacers that allowed me to put the slides equidistant apart. This allows all the drawers to be the same size. I had ripped and cut all of the drawer parts off camera and then got to work assembling all of them. My new drawer method is simple as I glue all of the butt joints together and then hold everything in place with brad nails to secure it. Next I drill all of the holes for the bloom slide hardware. For the drawer fronts, I laid out a pattern and got to work cutting everything to size. Once the fronts were cut, I clamped the bottom one in place and used my drawer hardware jig to drill holes for the handle. I then set an 8 inch spacer on top of the bottom drawer front clamped it and then drilled the hardware location in the next drawer front. I repeated this for the remaining drawers and it worked out really well. I added a slight round over to all of the drawer fronts and then got to work installing them. I simply added the hardware through the drawer and front and then screwed the two together from the inside. Next, I slid the drum sander on top of the cabinet. I added the bolts to mount the drum sander to the cabinet, and the cabinet was complete. One feature that I did add was on the bottom drawer, I cut a 45 degree angle on the bottom edge of that drawer front. This allows my toes to access the locks on the casters. This is something I'm probably going to go back and do in retro on all of my other shop furniture. Now my drum sander has a mobile cabinet base with tons of storage. Tell me, what do you think of this build? I'd like to thank Rigid Power Tools for sponsoring today's video and supplying me with the saws that I used in today's project. If you like this video, please click subscribe and stay tuned for more. I'm Casey with Sea Reeves Makes, and thanks for watching.